fast do you say they get up to? Yeah, you guess so after a couple of knots. Two or three knots I think you get still up to. It took us a year to get from California with this wave glider to Australia. And what we're seeing now is this massive wealth of data that was generated en route. That data is going to be provided and has been provided free to anybody who wants to take a look at it. And coming into Australia, the Australian people and the Australian government have been very welcoming to this sort of technology. They're We've seen an incredible adoption of this sort of technology within Australia and some real leadership from companies like UVS who have brought in WaveGlider into Australia. And we wanted to demonstrate with Papa Mao crossing the Pacific, coming all the way via Hawaii to Australia, that this technology was not just relevant locally to the United States where it was developed, but globally, and particularly for countries with substantial shoreline and real environmental interests. Um, protecting the Great Barrier Reef, watching for port and harbor security, keeping an eye on what the currents are doing, watching for typhoons. And all of this work can be done with robotic devices like the wave glider. And it's enabled because it's persistent, it can stay out there for so long. Now, we've worked with some, uh, some Australian partners as well as some uh, American partners on studying just that, particularly the primary carbon variable of the climate change equation. And Labs like NOAA PMEL in, in uh, Washington and uh, folks like the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in Bari have all been studying that problem and they've been bringing their technology, their sensors, onto the wave gliders so they can study this climate problem and help the world understand what the real impact's likely to be and just where we are.